what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we just finished up watching uh monday night raw night two of the wwe draft and uh for me it was more or less kind of similar to what happened on night one most of the draft picks were already on their respective brands uh it was cool to see Ilya dragunov get drafted up to monday night raw it's gonna be very interesting to see what they do with him but outside of that most of these draft picks were more or less um kind of you know the same they were on on their respective uh brands it was cool to see uh a few nxt call-ups from the women's division get called up to uh different brands so i thought that was pretty dope to see more women are going to be on the main roster definitely they could use it to uh you know make the both divisions stronger on monday night raw and smackdown so that's going to be very interesting also if you see my shirt see through i got the don't hinder gender shirt on i had to wear it because i failed i try not to laugh and the top letters is green i have my green screen and i didn't feel like taking the green screen off so that's why i'm see through on my shirt whatever anywho but we got to talk about probably the most noticeable thing that happened on this show and that is cm punk and drew mcintyre now cm punk was drafted earlier in the show and drew mcintyre ended up getting drafted um towards you know well later on not towards the end but later on and essentially drew was upset about that drew comes out there and he's irritated because he's like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you're telling me the guy that's injured that can't work right now is drafted before me the guys that the guy that's been putting in the business like putting in the work he got drafted before me but he can't even wrestle and he was upset about it and the theme here with drew is his obsession with cm punk even though he doesn't think he's obsessed, he is because he can't let things be what it is. He's mad that CM Punk got drafted over him. And he basically talked about uh, his injury that he suffered at the hands of CM Punk. He's like, unlike CM Punk, who's sitting at home and can, you know, you know, getting a free check, you know, cashing in a free check, making free money to lay up on his couch. I'm out here working putting in the hours putting in the grind while injured and he's the one that injured me at wrestlemania when he attacked me from behind and all of a sudden you hear cm punk's music hit and drew he's trying to find him he's obsessed he's he's looking back you know at the ramp entranceway like what's going on where is he at he's he's ready to fight and then you hear cm punk say come on music come on music and you see him all the way in the top in one of the press boxes so cm punk's like man i'm not at home i'm not laying up at home i'm right here you little bitch what you gonna do about it come up here and 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 see what you're gonna do i want to see what you're gonna do i'm right here you little bitch what you gonna do love it love that and drew is pissed so he drops the mic and he leaves and he is making his way up all the way from the bottom floor to the top press box he wants the smoke with cm punk so we cut to a shot him getting all the way to the press boxes like the little not press boxes i guess you can call them sweets or whatnot he gets up there he gets in there he's looking for cm punk and then he doesn't see cm punk but he see a picture of cm punk autographed by him and then all of a sudden cm punk music hit and cm punk is down by the ring at the entrance way and drew is pissed because he literally walked all the way up there and he wasn't even with him cm punk is playing mind games with him he comes out there he does his entrance crowd chant cm punk he gets a microphone and he says you know what i ain't got much time i got about uh five minutes you know what I'm saying? Actually, I got about like five minutes and 20-something seconds. That's longer than you actually held the championship. So, hey, Pat McAfee, I need you to time me. I'm going to finish this up in less <laughs> less time than him holding the actual World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> that shit was cold, bro. He's trolling them back now. Like, I'm going to finish this whole segment quicker 
than you actually holding the championship. Like, I'm not going to take that long. You know what I'm saying? So he sits Indian style and he's facing him. And I love this because he's talking his trash. You know, he's he's letting it be known. Like, now I got your attention now. Now I'm I'm going to mess with you. You see, you sat up here and prayed for you, you know, that you were happy that you messed up my tricep. You prayed for that. You prayed for that. And look what happened. I injured you. I took your opportunity away. I took, I was the one, I'm one of the reasons why you lost your championship. And now you're hurt. And now you're mad. You're, you're upset why I got drafted first. Because I'm the best in the world. I'm the best on the micro, best in this ring, best on the microphone, best at commentary. No offense to Pat McAfee and Michael Cole. This is what I do. You're upset, but that's okay. Because I want you to know when I come back and I'm 100% medically cleared, I'm going to make your life a living hell. And I can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. And the shot. Um, Drew just sitting up there with this crazed look. His hair's all over the place. Like, he just has this crazy look about him. I love this. I love this completely because this is very good. They have been cooking this feud, and they haven't really had any physical interaction except at WrestleMania 40. And obviously before then, you know, you know, a few times. But they've been cooking this feud, and this is great. I I coined this as pretty much the feud of the summer. This is going to be the feud of the summer, and I cannot wait till they have their match. Hopefully, it's before SummerSlam, but if it's at SummerSlam, that's probably one of the biggest matches you can put on. The promo package for this is going to be fantastic. I'm all for this. I am truly all for this match. I can't wait till they actually are able to... Uh, when CM Punk is 100%, and obviously Drew McIntyre, hopefully he can heal up as well. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna give us something great. This is gonna be good, and they're killing it because both guys are killing it on the microphone. Drew has found his voice. CM Punk has always had it. He's killing it. They're both killing it, and it feels there's some realism added to it, especially with the social media antics. I love this. This is good. This was the best part of Monday Night Raw. CM Punk trolling. Drew McIntyre making this guy walk all the way to the press box or uh, the press suites only for him to not be there. And then after the whole segment, he turned his back on him. He sat still sitting Indian style and he just had his back towards him like he's just a J.A.G. Oh, I love this. Love this feud of the summer. Can't wait to see how this plays out. Comment down below. Let me know, man. Are you guys excited about this Drew McIntyre and CM Punk feud. Um, Because I know I am. Like, they, they are knocking this out the park. Let me know how excited you guys are. And how do you think um they're going to continue playing out this story? Do you think CM Punk is going to be one of the reasons why Drew McIntyre does not win the King of the Ring tournament? Because I believe Drew McIntyre is in the King of the Ring. I do think CM Punk may be one of the reasons why he does not win just to piss off drew even more y'all let me know what y'all think about that but i appreciate all the love and support bro 250k and i'm seeing you on speedy youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace